Hi guys, welcome to the build video of my 60 inch laser from Pilot RC. I'm gonna guide you through all the build steps from building up the plane, do some small modifications, installing the, all the electronics and set up the plane to make it ready to fly. So enough talking, let's jump right into the build steps and have a closer look to all the details. First I removed the wooden plates which covered the openings for the servos. Um, there were some numbers on it for the cable extensions you need to uh, mount on your servos, but the numbers were actually wrong. As you can see, zero centimeters, but they were 15 and 16 cent 60 centimeters actually. Then I used a knife and a file to get the openings nice and clean, all the edges cleaned also on the wings, the same steps. Then on the elevator I had a few uh, damages on the covering, so I used the heat gun at 120 degrees to solve these issues. Then check the cuts of the vertical stabilizer if the hinges fit perfect. Then on elevator and on rudder and on the fuselage there were spots which were black which didn't look good so I took some Oracle 751 film and covered these black areas and used also the heat gun to make them perfectly sticky and like this the parts look way better than with the stock black areas. Then I sorted out all the small parts to go on for the next build steps. On the rudder there were the slots way too big for the hinge and I then used epoxy to glue in all the hinges just to make sure that there is no play in the slots for the hinges. Then taped all the slots um, to avoid any uh, epoxy excess on the rudders. So like this everything was ready for putting on epoxy. Used five minute epoxy to glue in the servo horns. Next step was to cut the opening on the bottom of the fuselage. You need to get the air out of the fuselage which uh, is pushed in from the cowl of the plane. So there is one spot you can cut which is prepared with more wood around the edges of the opening. So you can cut open uh, this part of the fuselage. Then it was time to install the horizontal stabilizer and elevator and for this I also had to install the tube on the fuselage just to make sure that the angle of the 
stabilizer and elevator are perfectly right angled so you need to have the same distance on both sides from the edge of the uh, horizontal stabilizer to the, to the wing rod and you also need to be leveled perfectly in comparison to the wing rod. Then it was time to glue on the small part to cover the opening to install the vertical stabilizer. I also used some white tape to make uh, the part look a bit nicer to fit the design of the covering of the rest of the fuselage. Then it was time to glue on the hinges. First I glued them onto the rudder side. For this I used the UHU CA glue. Then I pre-stacked the uh, rudder onto the slots of the hinges and then glued everything on, put it on and moved it to the angle so I have perfectly free movement. The pre-assembled tail wheel didn't move free so I had to loose the, the screw to make the wheel fit perfect and just loosen a bit and then everything moved perfect and was ready for installation. This part you can see here was missing in the kit actually, so I took some parts which were laying around, used this part, screwed it onto the rudder and then everything was ready for the installation, but uh, the wheel didn't fit perfect, so I had to sand off a little bit of the carbon fiber mount just to get the wheel more in front, so you match the uh, pivot point of the wheel and the rudder perfectly. Then marked the installation points and drilled the holes for the screws. The rod was way too long to control the tailwheel, so I cut down the length just to get a, a useful length of the rod of the tailwheel. Then I checked the main landing gear. The holes were too small for the wheel axles, so I had to drill out the holes to 6 mm to make the uh, axles fit and sand them down to clean holes. Like this, the axles then fit perfect. Then I changed some screw hardware, steel hardware, which is stock to install the main landing gear and changed to aluminum hardware to save some weight. The nuts for the wheel installation didn't fit. This is all the stock hardware that didn't fit at all. So I changed to flatter uh, nuts, which I secured with Loctite. And at the same time with changing this hardware, I also saved a little bit of weight and made even the wheel installation possible. With the stock hardware, which came with the kit, the installation of the wheels, including the wheel covers, wasn't even possible. And after the modifications, it was still tricky, but okay to install the wheels, including the wheel covers. Then I drilled the additional holes into the wheel covers to avoid uh, spinning the wheel covers during flight. And I also had to use custom screws because the kit screws didn't fit at all. So I had to change this. Then it was time to make the uh, servo rods ready for all the rudders and for this I used my drills to get all the uh, rod ends installed on the rods. Mm -hmm. 
Then it was time for installation of the motor. So first I checked the pre-installed screws if they are pretty well Loctite, everything was good. Then I screwed on the motor mount, used Loctite for every single screw to make sure that nothing will come loose during flight. And then it was time for the installation of the motor on the motor mount and everything was fit perfectly, no changes were needed. Then I prepared a cowl to get it installed, so for this I took some tape, marked the spots where I had to drill the holes into the fuselage, put it on the cowl, the prop and everything to align the cowl perfectly to the spinner. And after figuring out this position, I stuck on the tape and marked the holes and then drilled the holes to get perfect position the installation of the cow screws. Then I started to prepare the ESC. I removed the telemetry wire just to also save some weight because I don't use any telemetry. Then prepared all the connectors, connectors for the batteries. I use gold bullet plugs just because these are my favorite connectors for batteries. And shrink tube then to make everything nice and safe. All the stock uh, connectors fitted from motor to the ESC, so I didn't have to change anything on ESC and motor wiring. First position of the ESC was sideways, but the CG later showed that it was too much in the front, so I installed the ESC on the lower side and like this the CG was perfect. Then it was time to install the servos. I first uh, connected the uh, servo extensions. The servo extensions have nice uh, hooks which avoid to come loose of the extensions from the servo cable. And like this, um, every servo was prepared for the installation. First I tried to install the wiring from the back of the plane, but this was totally wrong because you have some holes which the cable should go through the fuselage and because of this you need to take off the extension from the servo, put the extension through the fuselage from the front side and like this you can connect the servos on the back side and then everything is ready to screw the servos onto the fuselage. Also here I drilled small holes for the screw to make them perfectly fit and installed all the rubber hardware and uh, mount hardware for the servos to make the servos work perfect on the plane. Then installed the servos and screwed them on with the included hardware which came with the servos. Also on the wings the installation of the wiring was a bit tricky but it's important to get it out on the, on the exact right spot. Then it was time to start programming a new model. I had to select airplane and no flaps. And like this, the, the transmitter was ready to uh, get power on the plane to set the servos to zero position and start the installation of the servos. I did the first check if I had to reverse the ESC and it was actually not okay. It was in programming mode with the uh, throttle stick at bottom position. And if it's like this, you hear the sound like this, you need to reverse uh, your uh, throttle channel to make sure that your uh, ESC will work properly. Second check showed that everything is okay, it counts the cells and then it's ready for spin-up and everything works well. Then I drilled the servo horns to make the M2 uh, screws fit perfect and installed the servo horns at zero position of the servo and checked the length of the rods for the servos. Mm -hmm. 
on the wing uh, I had to shorten the rods because they were simply too long I had to cut off around 7 to 8 millimeters to even make the rods fit with the servos I use then I took an extension for easy programming of the wings like this everything uh, was simple to set up and works well so far every servo was set well. The stock uh, servo horns will be changed later because especially on elevator I am not able to get the range of travel of the elevator I like to have. Then it was time to install the prop and the spinner. The spinner is pretty small so as you can see with 16 inch prop the opening for the prop is a bit small but everything fitted well. Then I changed the hardware from steel to aluminum hardware to install the spinner, also to remove some weight. For the CGE fit I had to install the battery pretty close at the wing rod. Depends on the battery. I have batteries which are uh, around 50 grams difference in case of weight, so but everything went perfect. And after this, the plane was ready and looked pretty awesome. This is it about today's video, main flight video will follow soon and more stuff about the laser, about modifications and more I will do on this plane. So thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one, happy flying, have a good time, bye bye.